Okay, welcome back, geniuses. Um, this is the first day of Math 3, Module 1, um, and it's the beginning of composite functions and inverses, which leads into a very important concept called uh, logarithms. So uh, it's very important to understand this entire unit. So let's get a quick warm up in and then uh, talk about what we're, where we're headed. So if you guys remember from uh, Math 1 and 2, we've talked about uh, functions and this idea of function notation. And remember, if you're given functions, so in Math 1, um, you guys use this function notation where the F, the G, and the H are called the names of the functions. And the functions itself are these expressions here. And then right here, this x, this x, this x, what's in the parentheses is called your input values. So when we're going to find or evaluate g of 2, we're going to go to function g. So we're going to use this function. And everywhere we see an x, we're going to replace it with 2. So this would be, in parentheses, 2 squared minus 3 times 2 plus 3. It is very important that anytime you substitute this value in, if you're going to put this in the calculator, you need to put it in parentheses. This one, it doesn't matter, but if you have negatives involved, it will matter. So if we put this in the calculator or evaluate it by hand, 2 squared minus 3 times 2 is 6 plus 3. That will give me negative 2 plus 3, which is 1. Okay, if I look at f of negative 8, now this tells me to use function f, and anywhere I see an x, I'm going to replace it with negative 8. So, right here it's going to be f of negative 8 is equal to 2 times negative 8 plus 1, which gives me negative 16 plus 1, which is negative 15. Then h of 10. That tells me I'm going to use this function here. Everywhere I see an x, I'm going to replace it with 10. So h of 10 is equal to the square root of 10 plus 6. Gives you the square root of 16, which would be 4. Okay. Now we're using that here to talk about this concept of composite functions. In composite functions, uh, basically if you're given two functions, f and g, the composite function denoted by f of g, right, or f composed of g. A lot of times you'll hear people say f of g, all right? <clears throat> and it's defined by, whenever you see this, what you're basically doing is plugging g of x into the function f. So you have to recognize and know both of these um, notations okay now the domain of f of g um, is the set of all numbers x in the domain of g such that g of x is in the domain of f i'll try to explain it a little better um, in a few minutes uh, via an example so looking at example one here um, it says find the domain of the composite function so right away if we go to do f of g f of g what we're basically doing here is doing f of g of x. Now that means, what is g of x? We're basically doing f of g of x is 2x plus 3, right? So now, everywhere we see an x in f, we're going to replace it with a 2x plus 3. So that would give us, in parentheses, so replace this with 2x plus 3. Replace this with 2x plus 3. So we would get 2x plus 3 all squared plus 3 times 2x plus 3 minus 1. This, remember if you multiply that out, 2x plus 3 times 2x plus 3, you have to FOIL it. So you get 4x squared. And you get plus 6x plus 6x, so plus 12x plus 9, 
plus 3 times 2x is 6x. 3 times 3 is plus 9 minus 1. So you would get 4x squared. 12x plus 6x is 18x. 9 plus 9 is 18. Minus 1 is plus 17. That would be f of g. But now when we talk about the domain of this, okay, the first thing we have to look at is what's the domain of g of x? Well, this function exists at all x values, so the domain of um, g of x is all real numbers. And then if I look at the domain of f of x, that is also going to be all real numbers. Therefore, when we look at the domain of f of g, it's going to be all real <clears throat> numbers. Okay? So now, realistically, you didn't have to do all this for that. So now when we go to the next example, what's the domain of g of f? G of F, if I look, we said the domain, now we're focusing on F first, so the domain of F is all real numbers. The domain of G is all real numbers. Therefore, the domain of the composite function would be all real numbers. <clears throat> okay. So now, what if we were to evaluate these composite functions? Well, if we go to find or evaluate this, this first example, letter A, we're basically doing f of g of 1, which means we're going to go to function g first. So g of 1 tells me to use this function here. And everywhere in that function, I see an x, I'm going to replace it with a 1. So g of 1 is 4. So now what I'm going to do is evaluate f of, now g of 1 gets replaced with 4. And f of 4 is going to be 2 times 4 squared minus 3. Which gives me 2 times 4 squared is 16 minus 3 gives me 32 minus 3, which is 29. Okay? So again, when you're doing these, the next one, I'm basically doing G of F of 1. So this tells me to evaluate F of 1 first. So what is F of 1? F of 1 is going to be 2 times 1 squared minus 3, which gives you 2 times 1 minus 3, which is 2 minus 3, which is negative 1. So now I'm going to evaluate g of negative 1. So I go to g, everywhere I see an x, I'm going to plug in negative 1. So g of negative 1 is negative 4, and that would be your answer here. Okay, letter C, f of f of negative 2, so we're basically doing f of f of negative 2. So if we evaluate f of negative 2, right, remember you have to plug it in parentheses. So 2 times negative 2 squared minus 3 will give me 2 times 4 minus 3, and 8 minus 3 gives me 5. So now I can evaluate f of 5, which is going to give me 2 times 5 squared minus 3. 5 squared is 25. 2 times 25 is 50. 50 minus 3 would give me 47. Okay, and then the last one, g of g of negative 1, if I look here, g of g of negative 1 is basically, I'm going to evaluate g of negative 1 first, which we know is 4 times negative 1, which is negative 4. So what is g of negative 4? 
Well, <clears throat> 4 times negative 4 is negative 16, and we are done. Okay. Now, example 3. Find the domain of f of g if f of x equals 1 over x plus 2 and g of x equals 4 over x minus 1. One thing you want to know here is that <clears throat> we're not going to evaluate f of g first. All we're looking at is the domain of this function. So now, think about it this way. The first thing we have to do is talk about the domain of g. What is the domain of g of x? Well, here's the thing. This function will exist everywhere that the function is defined. But where is it not defined? Well, if I think about it, if the denominator is equal to 0, if you do 4 divided by 0 in your calculator, you get undefined. Well, what value of x would make this denominator equal 0? That would be 1. So the domain of g of x, right, when we discuss this, it's x such that, so it's basically all your x values such that x cannot equal 1. So that's the domain of your g of x. What is the domain of f of x then? Well, the only thing you cannot plug in there is negative 2, because that would make the denominator equal 0. But what you have to remember is how would we get a negative 2 there? Well, if x cannot equal negative 2, that means g of some value cannot equal negative 2. Right? So what value of x makes g of x equal negative 2 is what we have to find. So what is g of x? 4 over x minus 1. And we don't want this to equal negative 2. So I'm going to go ahead and solve for x. First thing I'm going to do, multiply both sides by x minus 1. These cancel out. I get 4 equals. Distribute here. Negative 2x plus 2. Subtract 2. Negative 2x equals 2. x equals negative 1. So, here's the thing. So the overall domain of f of g is equal to x, the set of numbers x, such that x cannot equal 1, or x cannot equal negative 1. Okay. So, and, and right now, if you're not understanding this, you know, it's not a huge deal. we got to figure it out, uh, but it's not the end-all, be-all of the chapter. So example four here. We're going to quickly evaluate this, right? F of g of 1. So remember, we're doing F of g of 1. So with this, what is g of 1? If I go in this table, when x is 1, what is g? 0. So now we're basically doing f of 0, which would be negative 1. Okay? Now, the next one, g of f of negative 1. So right away here, I'm going to figure out f of negative 1. So f of negative 1 is negative 3. And now g of negative 3 is going to give me g of negative 3 is 8. Done. So the last one, g of g of negative 2. So g of negative 2, so g of negative 2 would be 3. So now g of 3 would be 8. And that's how you would use that table. Go ahead, try the homework, and let me know if you have any questions.